Whew. Man, getting back in the gym is rough. Fifth day, fifth workout. You know, to switch to a lot of walking and stuff, but uh, it's rough. <laughs> it's fucking rough. Oh my god, it's rough. Well, today's story is a little kinky, a little salacious. There's a uh, there's some stuff going on here. There's a lot of stuff going on here. But I feel the urge to share. I really do. But before I get into that, get my free audio book to enhance the way that you think. It's benefits for everyone. First link below. Let's talk about Miss Dupree. When you work in the labor pool, there is so many different types of jobs, gigs, whatever you want to call it, that are out there. And one day I went in and I got out first thing. I mean, I, at that point I had built up a rapport. I knew the people. They knew that I was dependable, didn't cause trouble, didn't smoke, didn't drink, and didn't have a drug habit. Some jobs, I, I just, they would hold for me because they couldn't take a chance with the people that were there. I won't say riffraff, but they're not really riffraff. They were just uh, troubled. Let's say they were troubled. So I, I get in and the lady behind the counter like, hey, good morning, I got something for you. Bam, she slapped the ticket on the table and this job was paying 10 bucks an hour. At that moment, I did a half happy dance and the lady said, that it had the potential to be long term. I was like, what? Long term? Because <laughs> probably the previous three weeks, I was in the $5.15 to $7 range, and it was all short term, break your back, go home and peel the scabs off your palm type work. And she said, it's inside, it's working in the warehouse. It was like, I love you. And that's what I said to the lady. She just giggled. I know, dear. I know. They all do. They all do. So I get my little ticket and she said, report to Miss Dupree. And I said, ooh, even, the, like, even the, the name of the lady sounded like good. I was like, Miss Dupree versus, that, that was that was like working for me. That was working for me. So I, I go ahead and you know, grab my ticket and strut out because I didn't even sit down. I just walked in and walked out. That was the epitome of coming up in the labor pool when you had, when you had it like that. So I get on Marta and I head to the gig and I get there early, of course, because I did not want to disappoint Miss Dupree. Boy, 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 boy. So I'm sitting there waiting and one of the guys that works there, he's like, hey, you the temp guy? Yep, yep. He said, okay, Miss Dupree will be in the mix. She gonna like you. And he just started laughing hysterically. It's like, that, that's not Bolden well. I'm like, why the dude just look at me? He laughed hysterically, talked to one of his co-workers, they pointed at me and they started laughing. I was like, what? You know, at this point, you know, Mr. Pre wasn't sounding so hot. I was like, what the hell? So I sit there and I say, okay, you know what? You don't know what the deal is. Maybe they just fucking with you because you're a tip. Who knows? Keep a positive outlook. Mr. Pre is gonna be the best thing you've ever seen. So I'm sitting there, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and the time that I was supposed to report comes and pass, no Miss Dupree. People walking by, go, oh, she'll be here, don't worry. And they all kept saying, she's going to love you. I started to feel some kind of way about myself. I was like, what is this? What is this Miss Dupree, and why does everyone keep saying that to me? I'm getting a complex. So about 30 minutes after the, I was supposed to report, I hear tick 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 the pointed click of a woman in stilettos and i'm like is that miss dupree because you know stilettos make a certain click sound that regular heels don't i just know it i'm a leg man i know this trust me trust me so i'm sitting there and the clicking grows louder click 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 then it stops and i hear this voice I, this voice it is like made of velvet 
I mean, it's just this, I mean, beautiful voice. It's like, is that Mr. Pre? It's some stilettos speaking like that. Uh, hmm. Then my mind immediately defaulted to a negative place. Fat chick. Then I was like, what the fuck you eat? Dude, as long as you get paid, it doesn't matter what the hell she looked like. You had these folks get you a complex. So the clicking starts again. Click, click, click. And she rounds the corner. And she's not really, she's kind of sexy. But as she got closer, and there was this smile on her lips, and she had like this little mole, right? This, that, I guess that beauty mark. I don't know if it was made or if she was born with it. And she got closer, and I could tell that she was sexy, but very mature. And no, you know, that later on I found that no one knew how old she was because she wouldn't tell you. But she was mature. But you, she was well preserved, very, very well preserved. And uh, she comes in and she speaks to me with that voice of velvet. I am so sorry, dear. You're on time. You'll be paid for your time. We believe in remuneration here. Follow me. So click, click, I'm following her. And like I said, you know, I was like, okay, she's cool. She's nice. I'm getting paid for sitting on my ass. That is working for the kid. So she takes me in her office. She said, ask me for my sheet. I give her my sheet. And she goes ahead and puts like a start time that's an hour early. So she gives me an hour for just waiting. I was like, Mr. Dupree, why thank you. And she's like, don't disappoint me, son. And at that point, that voice changed. <laughs> That voice changed. It was like, that's not the same. That, does she have an inside and an outside voice? Because that's not the same voice I heard when she came in. And I was like, clear the level. I was like, she gave you an hour, dude. She's cool. She's cool. She's cool. So she takes me to the back. And she gives me a list of instructions. And she says very pointedly, do I need to write this down? Um, do I have to write this down for you, dear? Or do you understand what I am telling you to do? And I said, Mr. Dupree, I understand. But as a safeguard for our budding relationship, and I actually said that because I felt, to, for some reason, I felt I could take that kind of license. I would prefer that you write it down so there will be no mistakes. And she says, I like how you think. So she writes it down, tells me, you know, and everything. And the work is like easy peasy breezy. I came up with a system. I was knocking stuff out. I went ahead and did twice as much as what she wanted done because they had a flaw. And this is one of those things where I learned how to organize a warehouse. It's amazing how things that you do early in life come back to help you. And she comes back about four hours later to check my progress. And she says, oh my, oh my. Then she comes up and she does something highly inappropriate, highly. She comes up and she hugs me. Oh dear, this is wonderful. And the hug wasn't the inappropriate part. I'm a hugger, doesn't bother me. But it was not just a hug, it was a lingering lift, left me coated in some kind of French perfume, rub up, feel me down, Harm still draped around my shoulders while we discuss the things that I'm supposed to do in the warehouse. I started feeling uncomfortable. I started feeling very, very uncomfortable, like a fish in a bowl that was about to be consumed for dinner. And then she lets me go, and I was like, okay, maybe she's just overly touchy feeling. Once again, she gave you an hour, she's giving you praise, and she's, you know, and then the, the velvet voice comes back. Oh dear, this is this will do. This this is what we need. This is what we need. I like this. I like this. Very good. Very good. You're you're not disappointing me. I can't. I just couldn't take being disappointed again today. It's just started off so wrong. This is where I fucked up. I think if I had not said these words, oh, Mr. Dupree, what happened? She proceeded to sit down, cross her legs, and the whole time, she's like, sit. And there's a chair next to her. I sit, and her hand is on my knee. And she proceeds to tell me about the disappointing children that she has. I work so hard, I provide for them, and they just, they're just, just disappointments. And I was like, well, these, these things happen, Mr. Dupree. And um, that's where I fell into the rabbit hole. Nothing else weird or inappropriate happened that day, but um, I had a feeling. 
that that was not going to be the last time that inappropriate actions would happen. So I go in the next day. I got a new list. I'm doing stuff. I'm like dictating policy. And every day, Mr. Pree's giving me an hour to two hours extra. I'm like, wow, this, this is really cool. So three days go by because it's a long term time. She said, we have a lot of stuff to do. We we're wondering if we're going to make this full time position. You know, I, I'll just tell you, you know, the word is out that you are the man. And then she just spun around on her heels and walked out. And I was like, I was feeling kind of elated and I was feeling a sense of dread in my, the pit of my stomach because there was something up with this chick. But she didn't do anything appropriate for about five days, six days, always an hour, hour and a half. And like when she was pleased, it was two hours. So I was just like, what can I do to please Mr. Pretty? What can I do? Because I mean, I was working eight to 10 hours for real with an hour or two on top of that. I mean, cake, cake, cake. I was loving it. It was like, you know, as we say in the labor pool, clean, inside, air conditioning, brakes, lunch. This was like labor pool fucking gold. So I'm like, I'm not messing this up. Okay, if she wants to touch me, fuck it. I'll be your whore. And because uh, I was getting comfortable. I had a designated place to go. I was starting to feel a little bit more uh, comfortable with myself because when you're working hard ass jobs for pennies, it fucks with your self-esteem. I don't care. It's like, you know, a hard day's work. Shh. So we go on. And it's about day eight that the inappropriateness begins again. But it doesn't, you know, she was subtle. She was real subtle. Then, you know, she came and hugged me. And I swear she felt my ass. I swear. But it was so quick and it was so deft. I was like... Because you know when you don't want something to happen so you and your mind see it didn't happen and you start making excuses and you start like, no, that didn't happen. You start questioning your own sanity because it's like, no, Mr. Bree did not touch my ass. No, she did not. That's, you know, I'm getting a little emotional about it. So that happens and then the next day she comes in and she is terribly upset, terribly upset. And she's like, uh, what are you doing for lunch? And I said, well, I brought my lunch. I mean, I only have 30 minutes. Well, she said, today you have an hour or more. Where are we going? And I was like, I don't have a car. So she says, I have a car. I have gas. I have money if needed. Where are we going? <laughs> oh, Lord. At that point, I knew I was in trouble. I knew I was in trouble because I couldn't say no and I couldn't weasel out of it because I began to understand what the folks were saying about why I must have been Mr. Priest type. You know, some people have a type and whatever it was, I was it. And at the time, I was six, you know, well, I guess I'm still six one, about 225 and extremely buff. Because I, you know, living in the boarding house, I just worked out all the time. Walked, worked out. So I was really like tip-top shape. And I said, well, we could go to uh, Mary Max Tea Room. And she puts her hands together and she says, I love that place. And then she grabs my chin and does that. And then caresses my cheek. I am scared. I am a scared little bitch because I've got not one problem I have two problems number one I need this job because I you know luxury ones taste to become necessities I wasn't ready to lay I was like no 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 I can't fuck this up and go back I mean you know I'm making hundred hundred and twenty dollars a day consistently hundred hundred and twenty hundred and thirty and I'm just you know I'll start like lowering my standards and just whoring myself out of like if she touches my ass Fuck it, she can touch my ass. I need this job. I mean, it's the epitome of sexual harassment. I knew what was going on, but I'm some chump from the labor pool, and this is Mr. Bree. So we go to lunch, nice lunch, everything's cool. We go back, and then um, she gets in the car on the passenger side. And as I get in, she has the keys dangling and she's like you drive back 
you do have a license. It's not suspended. You no, you don't have any warrants or anything. The last guy we had from Liverpool, he had a messed up life. He had warrants. The police actually came and arrested him. That's why you're here. I said, no, Mr. Pooh, I don't have any warrants. Oh, great. Awesome. And that hand is on my die the whole time that we go back. So, I'm sitting here questioning what I'm going to do because, like I said, I don't want to leave this job because it's cush. It's cake. I figured out a system where I could get everything that I needed done three, four hours and just goof off because I had they allowed me to have a Walkman. There was a little television back there. I wasn't trying to leave this. Trust me when I say the job I had before this is probably the reason that my intestinal, yes, intestinal fortitude was not where it needed to be because I put up with this. Go back, she goes to her office, meeting, she's gone. Then the next week, she's got to go out of town for a regional meeting. And it's just like I'm doing my work. She calls, and you know, one of the managers would come in periodically to check on me. And he was just like, Mr. Dupree just loves you. And he giggled like a girl. It's like, what? I was like, you know, I've been here for a minute. His name was Roger. Roger, Roger, Roger. Come here. Roger. Okay. What is the deal with Mr. Dupree? Every time y'all look at me and mention her name, y'all either laugh hysterically, start giggling, or something. And he said, okay, all right, I'll tell you. Because, you know, you've pretty much figured it out that she uh, she likes you. Yeah, I've, got, yeah, I've kind of figured that out. And um, the thing is, um, not the last guy. He wasn't really her type. She didn't mess with him. But um, it was put out that someone came into the office and Mr. Dupree was fucking one of the temps in her office. And I was just like, no. No, 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 she wasn't. No, she I didn't want to see that in my mind because you know, Mr. Cree, you know, you know, she was mature. And he's like, um, and she has a type, and you're her type, and you know, and it's just a matter of time before um she makes a move on you if she hasn't already. I see she really hasn't made a move, she's just been inappropriate. He said, Oh, it's coming. And I was like, um, question since uh, Mr. Pre is known to do these type of things and oh her brother owns the company she ain't going nowhere but you might <laughs> I was like damn I'm fucked if I don't fuck what do I do what do I do what do I do because the job like I said was cush it was cush I wasn't trying to leave and it was just uh, you know I was like man so I started applying at, you know, regular temp agencies and everything because I knew that that was going to be a problem because, like I said, Miss Dupree, she was nice, she was lovely, she was sexy, but she didn't make my junk wiggle. I, all the time she touched me, you know, there was no, ooh, Miss, no, it was more like, uh, Miss Dupree, Miss Dupree, Ms. could you stop that shit? I mean, seriously, it's just, I, it would have been a fail. It would have been a fail and I would have got fired. So, you know, damn. I can't do this. I just can't do this. Because she didn't turn me on at all. She was nice. Very pleasant to look at. Lovely woman. I mean, definitely, but no, I couldn't do it. I just kept looking at her like she was like my mother or something. So, she comes back and it intensifies. I mean, she's doing this stuff. Hugging me. Kissing me on the cheek. And I'm just like... I know y'all are going, hey, you could have like uh, recorded it sued for sexual harassment okay this was in the 90s camera phones and shit were not ubiquitous nobody was going to rat her out since everybody was giggling it was me against Mr. Dupree you do the math you know how that was going to turn out so I had to think I had to think I had to think so I'm at this temp agency one evening after I get off work and there's this little cutie and she just some just told me she had power I don't know what it was, but I could feel it. I don't know if it was the way she walked or just the strut, but she had power. And I said, like, look, you and I are going out tonight. And she said, we are? I said, yes, we are. I don't have a car, but I pulled out, like, I had, I had like 500 bucks on me cash. Because, like I said, I was making money. I was like, but I got cash. We going out, you and me. We're going to have a nice dinner. We're going to talk. And she just started smiling. She said, I haven't been on a date in a year. Of course we're going out, sure. By the way, what is your name? 
And I started doing a Miss Dupree on this other girl. Well, I will not remember her name. I will not say her name because we're still friends. And um, I got myself a better gig and I was able to lead Miss Dupree. See, I know you were thinking like, oh, he fucked Miss Dupree. No, I didn't. I resigned. I resigned because I don't know what I would have done just to be unvarnished. Just I don't know. Maybe I would have like imagined like a genie or something and made my dick right. I don't know. But I didn't want to be in that position. But it really illuminated to me how vulnerable you are in life when you have no power. I mean, I could have been, I mean, look, just, 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 just be, keep it real. I could have been muffin diving on grandma. I could, I may have been, I mean, I mean, I, I was like that close. It's that close. I mean, who? I mean, just the horror, the horror of all that. I don't know. I don't want to know. But that, that is. It's insane. It is insane. It, it just, um, I mean, I still think about that because I think that's one of the reasons that I'm so obstinate about you know, business, that to be in that position where someone has so much control over you, they know it, that they're going to go for your goodies. I mean, I could have been Mr. Priest, bitch. Do you, do you understand how demeaning that is? I'll just, I never did that to any employee I had. Never, nothing, not even close. And there was a few I could have got away with it because they kind of liked me, but I, I didn't do that. But it was an experience. It, it made me realize that not only was I in that position, but you know, right now there's somebody who has a Mr. Dupree or a Mr. Dupree and they've been over a desk right now taking that dick or licking that muff or doing whatever. They're doing that because they need that damn job. Cause I, I mean, it was scary. It was scary. It was just scary. Cause I mean, I, I, I'm just sitting there like, I, I'm in my room, right? And I'm like, well, maybe it wouldn't be so bad fucking Mr. Free. And I was just in my mind, it's like, you just said, you're just a little bitch now. You just gonna fucking sell out like that for some fucking little job? You gonna be fucking grandma? I mean, I, internal struggle. It was like, now this is where it gets crazy. Living in the boarding house, right? Some of my friends were crackheads. Just, they were. So one of my crackhead friends, who for some reason, whether on crack or not, actually gave a lot of good advice. Couldn't fuck, fix her life, but I was like, hey, let me let me holler at you. Let me, I got this thing. He's like, well, definitely Mr. Dupree gonna be trying to um, ride your uh, chocolatey stick, baby boy. I mean, you know, you say she's nice and just do it. I was like, I don't wanna do it. I mean, I don't wanna do it. She's like, well, uh, clearly talking to her is not going to work since she has power and she knows that she has your nuts in a sling. So what you need to do is find a better job as fast as possible because baby boy, you either going to get fired or you're going to fuck. Whatever you do is going to begin with an F because you're going to be doing one of those things. And I was just like, Whew. I mean, the truth is the truth and that was where we were heading but I did not fuck Mr. Dupree when I told the temp agency I wasn't going back but you know it's just like she called me they, she somehow got my number to the boarding house because she had to put down a fucking number at the uh, labor pool and I guess Mr. Dupree had pulled there too and she's like where are you? We need you. You are an asset to this organization. What's going on? And I said, Mr. Dupree, I want to thank you for the opportunity to become a better man. You really helped me out. But some things have happened, and I have to be closer to this part of town for family reasons. But I miss you. And she said, well, since we don't work together, maybe you can come over for dinner. I said, Mr. Dupree, I have too much respect. And this is when I learned that saying certain things were just just, just the best way to go because I totally bitched out on this. And I was like, I just had fantasies about you and I had dreams. And it's just, you're just too good of a woman for me.
you're just too good of a woman for me. I couldn't do it. And with that, and with that, I hung up the phone and went back to my boarding house life, doing what I did, laying in my bed, wondering what it would have been to be Mr. Pree's bitch. I really think that if I had made that move, that I wouldn't be the man that I am today. I think um, I would respect myself. I really think things would be pretty damn bad. Well, yeah, that's life in the labor pool. And this, you know, now it's not so bad. And it's just at the time, I wasn't mentally in a place where I could really deal with that. And I know some of you motherfuckers were like, shit, I would have fucked her. Fuck that. But that was one of the last jobs I had because the staffing agency got me the gig at Powertel, which became Voice Stream, which became T-Mobile. And that's when I did my thing to get to rent a crate. So, you know, in the end, it was the proper course of action. But I just wonder, just wonder, just fucking all right, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.